tell us what you've been up to. Um, put all the cam shafts in, timed up all the cam gears, put the outer cover on, put the distributor in, cam followers in, built all the rear brake pedal, had to make push for that, it was all too loose. So that's all nice and tight now, so flap around like anything. That's your rear brake mechanism. Rebuilt the dynamo, fitted all the wiring, that's the extra relay they have on them if they're running blackout lamp. That wire there I've got to extend, that goes up to the top plate here. Put the outer clutch cover on, the primary cover. Had to put the hydraulics in here and bend the crash bar back out because that wasn't wide enough. So just going through now and picking out any nuts and bolts that I can get rid of now so I know where they all go. Get rid of the stock pile as such. And then I'll um, paint the headlamp rim, I'll get the headlamp in, and then I'm waiting on mudguards really. I've got to get the wheels off and get them done. How did the wiring go? Because he said that was quite a bit of a peg in tune. Well, you can see it all in there. There's a, there's a lot of it. Um, but as long as you work it out methodically, I've done it once before. There's a actually live terminal post there. This wire here, if you put that red to that red, which you would assume where it goes, it burns out that red wire. Shoom, straight away out there. <laughs> I've done that one before. Because that isn't live and earth, that's that's just a connector block, that one. And that's your live connector, because your earth strap is just that one. It's kind of a mistake you only make once. Yeah. Because I remember looking at the wiring diagram when I was putting this together and thinking, yeah, I've done that before. There's <laughs> yeah, something about this. how this has come back together yeah yeah it's got a few bits I need to tidy up on it obviously but nothing too major but it's all gone together fine so good enough put steering dampers all in that's all working nicely so this handlebars are quite stiff there which way it goes now you back that off like that and your handlebars are nice and loose so that's just a tensioner on there stiffens it up. Why would you stiffen up the... Uh, Stop shake when you're riding them. Oh, okay. It just, just takes it out, you know. It's just an old... Well, a lot of old British bikes had them as well. It's just two friction discs in there. Spring loaded on there. As you wind that up, it pulls that up and puts friction on those. You can see the forks, friction disc, centre disc, friction disc. So that's locked there and locked there. Yeah? Yeah. So those, the bottom plate and that centre plate can't move because they're locked into grooves in the forks and the frame. So as you tighten that up, it just puts friction on it there. The timing mark, which is in the, uh, it's got a slot in there. When the engine comes round, see that slot? Yeah. Okay, so you want that just, just past the centre line. You want it about there, literally just past the centre. Yep. And you take these off. Right, that one's up in the air. It should be so that the inlet valve there is just closing. That's exhaust on the back. That's inlet opening. Right, so they're not moving. So we know that that will be firing on the front piston, yeah? This is for timing, yeah? Yes, yeah, so if you've got your valves rocking there, Okay. yeah, that means it can't be firing on the back piston because the valves are open. Okay. Yeah, so those two are staying shut, they're not moving. So you know, so we're lining our marks back up, I now know that's firing on the front piston. We want to be about, it's only a roughie on that. So then now that, you put that, all the way around there what you need to do is I'll put the points in loosely when that's pushed around that way yeah yeah you've got a marker here look yeah and a hole in there because you can adjust this band right so now we know I need to take that back out the distributor drive and rotate that 
so it's roughly or it should be in line with that yeah okay with the mark with the um, fiber pad on the points and that's how it was set from the factory you could time it up anywhere realistically but if you want these to line up which as it would have been from the factory then you take that out rotate it back to where you want it and get all that lined up and then you know where you're at right so as that comes up it's going that way so we want it to come round to about there so if we come back about that let's try that like I say you can time it up anywhere anywhere you like as long as you you set that front piston at its timing mark and you just do it that rotates whichever way it rotates and you set it to the point to just opening on one cam lobe and that's it but it's nice to get it back with everything lining up like the slot the hole so it might be one tooth out we'll try it coming around one more tooth but in reality that isn't very far out at all what's the repercussions of it being slightly out then nothing nothing you all, all you do is you you can put a little line on that white line on that and just run it on a strobe light and just pick up so you know it's it's perfect on the timing. Yeah, that's too much. So you, you've got to get a happy medium between the two, you know, because this could be a base off of another one. It could be anything, absolutely anything at all, you know. We've got slightly out there on that, so you can so you can loosen that band off. Just slide the band wherever you like. Again, it, it's just a matter of faffing around and getting it exactly where you want it, you know? Yeah. Um, but till I get the points in properly, then you can't really adjust it up, you know? And it's, it's only ballpark until you get the barrels on, but you can get it somewhere near, if you know what I mean. Because if you look in the books, it will show that probably with that round there. But you've got to be 100% sure that you've got it firing on the right stroke. Yeah. What's major left to do? When the new pistons turn up, we'll get the barrels off and get them reboard, put the new valve guides in, remount the valve guides, um, then I can build the barrels, paint them, put them on, cylinder heads on, mud guards on when Crimbo's painted them, tyres on the wheels. The only fiddly bit that's left really is getting the exhausts on, because they can be a right pain and the skid plate underneath. Okay. They are, because they get smashed to pieces, they they just never really fit. So um, I've got to take that one and put it on Mark's hydraulic ram. If you get a repro one, they don't fit. Okay. And they're a lot thinner. These are the real heavyweight ones. You can see how much abuse they have. Yeah. So I'll get all the major, you can see where people are beating it, heating it up and beating it out. So I'll get all the major bits out, tidy up all the welds. I mean, you could try and fit them, but they never fit. So you immediately, straight away, that doesn't fit. So I just straighten it all out as much as I can and clean it all up. Yeah, it's just bolting it together then, really. Fuel it up, oil it up, check all the electrics through, kick it over a few times, get some oil around it, and start it up. Next week on The Workshop.